Thank you. Uh, I'm here to tell you something about Immunicum. My name is Simon Zeilmaak. I'm the director of business development uh, for the company. Uh, we're public on the Nasdaq Stockholm. Uh, we went IPO actually in 2013 to the Nasdaq First North, uh, but beginning of last year we went to the uh, main market. Um, we are focusing on bringing a unique cell-based immunotherapy uh, for solid tumors uh, forward in clinical development. Uh, we just completed a phase two in kidney cancer, and I'll show you some of the results uh, we have. Uh, and in different studies, we've now completed uh, already a treatment for over 90 patients with a very good safety profile. Uh, our manufacturing is taking place in Germany. It's, a, it's an allogeneic, off-the-shelf uh, cell therapy manufacturing, uh, but we're also transferring that to the US to a site in New Jersey to really be ready for a commercial scale uh, of, of, of our development. Uh, our studies have been mainly performed in Sweden, then expanded into Europe, and, and now we have studies also ongoing in the US. So there's a lot of regulatory experience now around uh, the program. Uh, and beyond that, we also have a collaboration now in place with Pfizer and Merck Sorono. Uh, that's purely for a collaboration of, of supplying their checkpoint inhibitor for the new study that we're conducting. Uh, but that also validates uh, our program from, from that area. As I said, we're public at the Nasdaq Stockholm. The, the last financing we did was in, in uh, December 2018, around $36 million, uh, 350 uh, kroner. Uh, and that really helps us to, to, to continue our development for the coming 12 to 18 months and generate more data that supports our uh, program. Uh, we have a small team of about 16 people, uh, mostly based out of Stockholm now, uh, but we do have all the in-house expertise in terms of regulatory development, uh, manufacturing, uh, and of course, important for the future also, uh, the pharma and business development side. So what are we developing? As I said, it's, it's an allogeneic off-the-shelf program, which means that we start from a healthy donor, we take out immune cells, and we activate these immune cells to become inflammatory dendritic cells. Now, we're not using these as a vaccine, but we're purely using them for an inflammatory function. So when we inject these sites into the tumor, you will create a personalized immune response against that tumor tissue of a patient, while the product is always the same. It's always an off-the-shelf product coming from a, from a donor. There's no matching needed between donor and patient. Uh, and from one healthy donor, we get about 100 doses, and we inject patients only twice. So we can treat 50 patients from, from any uh, blood donor. Uh, and because we cryopreserve, we freeze the material, we already have a three-year shelf life. So for a cell therapy, this makes it actually a very straightforward way of, of, of manufacturing it. Now, after we inject these cells into the tumor tissue of a patient, and that can be the primary tumor, but also a metastatic lesion, uh, we create this immune response against uh, the, the tissue. So how do we do that? Our cells are purely producing uh, inflammatory molecules called chemokines and cytokines that are there to warn the immune system that something is going wrong. So the tumor is very good in, 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 in evading the immune response, but because we're creating this, let's say, local bomb inside the tumor, uh, we're warning the immune system to come in and see what is happening. So then we get actually the immune cells of the patients that are doing the work, starting to attack the tumor cells, uh, recognize the tumor cells, and in the end activate the patient's own killer T cells, as they are called, uh, as the end product of this mechanism. So only two injections of our therapy and the end product is a more systemic T cell response that can help not only this tumor site but also metastatic lesions uh, throughout the body. Now we've, we've tested this program already now in four uh, different clinical studies. Uh, we started in kidney cancer because in kidney cancer we had the opportunity to inject into the kidney cancer while following also the response against the metastatic lesions. That was a very small study in 12 patients in, in Sweden that we started in 2012, so quite some years ago. But because of that, we also have a lot of follow-up data of these patients that show the extended survival that you can accomplish uh, in, this, in this indication. Now, after we completed the phase one, we initiated two other small studies, one in liver cancer, uh, 18 patients, uh, also in Sweden, that was very promising. It's a very high unmet need in liver cancer, but we were able to show that an immunotherapy can make a difference there. 
uh, we also had a very small study, six patients in, in, in a rare indication uh, called gastrointestinal stromal tumors, uh, which even though it was only six patients, we were able to show uh, that this uh, tumor is responding to, uh, to an immunotherapy. More importantly, uh, recently we received the results of our phase two. So this was a phase two controlled study, meaning we had our immunotherapy followed by the standard of care being sunitinib uh, versus sunitinib alone. So 58 patients in the combination study and then 30 patients that only received the standard of care uh, after the primary kidney tumor was removed. So uh, we looked at response and we looked at survival and, and a few other endpoints. Now looking at response, we know that sunitinib on its own already had, had quite a good response. Uh, however, patients quickly progress usually in this indication. What we noticed on top of sunitinib is that we actually have more patients going into a complete tumor response, meaning there's no metastatic disease left uh, for that uh, patient. Uh, so we had 11% in our group versus only 1% or 4% or in the control group. Uh, and we also saw the same type of signal happening for the other responses. So we saw that there was a longer duration of response, meaning that patients have a more stable uh, uh, response uh, on, on the treatment and don't progress as quickly as they as they do on the on the combination on the control group. Uh, we also had much more respondents that were still ongoing at the end of the study, uh, and these respondents were also alive. Uh, this is all related to what immunotherapies have been accomplishing in other indications. That if you can make this response more durable and, and deeper, as they call it, uh, you also expect a better survival in the end. Now, regarding survival, we had the initial follow-up of only 18 months, but of course we have already treated patients that started four years ago. So we have that data as well. So after 18 months, there was no difference visible between both groups. However, if you look beyond the 18 months, you saw that actually in the combination group, a lot more patients were alive as compared to the control group. Now, this is something that we, of course, have to follow. We haven't reached the median overall survival, the average uh, survival in both groups, but we will continue the survival follow-up every six months uh, to see when we will reach this average and see if we see a survival uh, benefit. But based on, on all the individual patients we're now following, we're already starting to see quite an interesting uh, trend. Now, the next follow-up is going to be in, in January. Uh, so then we have at least 24 months survival for each patient, but also patients that started uh, quite some years ago. Um, we're going to publish that in, in January uh, to the general market. Uh, and beyond that, of course, we're now doing a lot of preparations in terms of the next study. Because it was a phase two controlled study, we do expect this data to be sufficient to move into pivotal uh, studies for kidney cancer. Uh, the market has changed since. We've seen introduction of checkpoint inhibitors in this indication. So now we have to go to authorities and discuss, okay, what is going to be the combination that we can move forward? Now, regarding checkpoint inhibitors, we are trying to position ourselves in combination with different classes because we only have two injections, because we have a complementary mechanism and a good safety, uh, we, we will try out different combinations. Uh, and checkpoint inhibitors is a very logical one. It, it's, it's a combination where we activate the immune system and they are able to block the defense of the tumor against the immune system. Um, so this is a study that we started earlier this year. Uh, we now completed the first cohort. The first six patients we have to treat one by one uh, for safety purposes. Uh, but luckily if in the first three patients we didn't see any uh, issues in terms of safety. And now we have moved to the, to the next dosing cohort, the 10 million cells per injection, which is the dosing that we have used in, in, in the other studies. Um, after the first six patients have been completed, we are able to open up the different cohorts. So then uh, recruitment should go a lot faster and we can complete the, uh, the phase one. After we go, after we complete the phase one, that's when we move into the phase two where we have the collaboration with Pfizer and Merck Sirono. For the phase one, we focus on using uh, Pembrolizumab or Keytruda, um, uh, but for the next one, we're going to combine with Avelimab or, or Bavincio. So as a summary, we have a very unique product in development in the immuno-oncology space. Uh, we're already quite advanced in terms of the, the clinical data that we have, and especially the safety that we have in different indications. Uh, we have the right team in place to really move this to the next stage of development. 
And, and regarding next stage of development, we have financing place to prepare for that, uh, and we are now exploring for options to, to move that into the right pivotal study. So if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them outside and, of course, over lunch as well. Thank you.